Ah, my dear doctor, you have been naive. <laughs> and today the master shall take full control of the TARDIS. <laughs> Mine. As I said, stop it! You're gonna hurt someone, and it'll be you. Now, welcome to Comic Guru Update number 10. The Decade of Wombles. <laughs> Today we are going to be reviewing IDW's Magic the Gathering comic, issue one and two. We are also reviewing a brand new independent company called Dime Bomb Comics. Uh, the first title is Dick Turpin and the Crimson Plague, and also London calling, and last but by no means least, the TARDIS of Doom. Guess what comic we've got today? Magic the Gathering! Yip yip yee! Hooray! Okay. It's a game you can play! It is! And the thing about Magic the Gathering the comic is really in the end, those who collect the actual card games don't really care about the comic. What they want is something rather special. The unique playable card on each issue of the miniseries. One and two are available now. Time Bomb Comics. What's that? Uh, Get out the bloody shot again! Uh, Carry on. So sorry. These, these indentured slaves get in the way all the time. Time Bomb Comics, brilliant new independent company that's actually just started releasing single one-shot graphic novels. And let me just tell you a bit about Dick Turpin and the Crimson Plague. Essentially, we have a nice little self-contained story about Dick Turpin fighting the ravaging monster that is Vampiris in a very authentic looking 1970s style horror story. The fact is, the artwork is gorgeous. I just want to show you this. As you can see, very much 70s inspired. Uh, it looks like it's just stepped off the page of, I don't know, um, Tomb of Dracula or one of the other 70s greats. A fascinating story about a historical character that some people have actually forgotten about. For me, Dick Turpin, great TV series in the actual 70s and 80s. For you, a really good graphic novel in the 2000s and noughties. Yes, be naughty and buy this one. Next, of course, is also from Time Bomb Comics, we have London Calling. A fascinating little graphic novel which has some really fun artwork. It's not deliberately retro. Uh, what it reminds me of are the old DC Thompson um, commando books that used to tell stories of the Second World War. It's got that feel to them. I don't know who the artist is, but um, it's very good and captures the essence very well. There's a lot of um, little homages within that. Everything from War of the Worlds right the way through to sort of resistance uh, fighting uh, the Germans. Uh, but it's set, seems to be set after the war. A fascinating little book. Thoroughly recommend it. And um, it seems to be self-contained. I loved it and I hope you will too. Ah, my dear doctor, you have been naive. Fortuitous would be a more apposite epithet. <laughs> And the good news, of course, with this wonderful mug is that um, it never really empties. It's full of infinite supplies of coffee. Well, infinite insofar as you have to go out and occasionally buy it. But um, isn't it absolutely amazing? Every Doctor Who fan's collection should have one of these. Let's face it, when it comes down to Doctor Who, for years and years and years, I was jealous of Star Trek fans. They had all the sort of toys that, if you pressed a button, you'd have the Enterprise bleach it blaring out, you know, photon torpedoes, major spread, Womble Jockstrap, Tuesdays. And now we have some of the most amazing stuff out there. Look at the just detail in it, look at the actual wombleness of it. And one of the clever things is you now no longer have to worry about the cats coming and taking a, a huge uh, sip of it, because it's protected. Protected! How cool is that? Buy more comics. 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 And that's enough.